Welcome back to another video. My name is Caroline. I'm a second year medical student at Columbia University. And today we're filming a med slash dental Q&A collab video with Mazina. So I'm Mazina. I'm a third year dental student at Columbia. And today we're gonna talk about all things choosing between a medical school and a dental school and which one might be the right career for you. So we're gonna start off by talking about the requirements for applying to med school and dental school. What is it like for pre-dental students? So essentially at my undergrad, they actually group us all together in like a pre-health program because the requirements for the core classes that you have to have as prerequisites are essentially the same. So it's one year of bio with lab, one year of gen chem with lab, one year of orgo with lab, um, physics with lab, and then biochem, I think you need only a semester and it can be with or without lab. And then for us, we also had to take um, math. So we had to take Calc 1 and either Calc 2 or stats. We also had to have, I think, a year of English. Awesome. I think that's exactly the same as the <laughs> yeah. pre-med requirements, at least what I took yeah. applying into med school. But the other thing also with dental school applications is that certain schools will also require like things on top of the required prerequisites. There were certain schools that I ended up not being able to apply to because they required something like microbio and mm -hmm. I had cell bio and so that wouldn't be able to count toward that. Yeah. Um, so if you are thinking of applying to dental school, you do have to look into those like school specific requirements because they may be different. That's a really, really good point. Maybe the summer that I was planning to apply, I was looking at the classes that I'd taken yeah. and one of the schools required a, a lab, like a bio lab class. Yeah. But in my undergrad, we could do like this summer undergraduate research fellowship and that counted as um, the like lab for bio. Yeah. And so I was thinking like, do I have to do yeah. research like as a course over yeah. the semester? So also pay attention to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you should also think about your undergrad experience as a very just like a holistic process not just because you want to get into medical school or dental school so i think i personally majored in biology and medical humanities it was a lot of the science but also the social science aspect of medicine yeah. i think medina did something very similar yeah so my major at my undergrad was actually called human bio but it wasn't just strictly biology courses so the major was actually interdisciplinary so we had courses from the philosophy department the sociology department the english department and it was things that were geared toward medicine and human biology but we had our core biology requirements and then we would take things like narrative medicine or medical psychology or medical ethics mm -hmm. it was only when i got to dental school where i realized just how many people didn't choose that like very traditional path of doing a science major so and on that topic i'd love to ask you about your gap year experience because i know yeah. that that is becoming also more common for med and dental yeah. school yeah for sure so i would say um one i don't regret it one bit i actually have a whole video about why you should consider taking a gap year i know carolyn you didn't take one <laughs> but um there are certain things i think particularly for dental school that are very important to do before you start and that is spending a lot of time in the dental office whether it's shadowing or working as a dental assistant um i think that it's a great thing to do before you start school because the amount of skills and the amount of knowledge that you pick up is just incredible i probably would say that over half of my class has taken a gap year and then there's the other side of the spectrum where i had people who were like 20 years old that were starting dental school because they finished undergrad in like two three years and they kind of skipped right into it so there's the spectrum of both but i would say that the people that i've talked to that are my classmates that have taken a gap year don't regret it at all because they used it to build their experiences and broaden their worldview mm -hmm. and that's really all you can ask for i think very similar for medical school so I personally did not take a gap year, but I don't know if it's a majority, but a lot of our classmates have taken gap years. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you don't need to use that year to do anything particularly medical. Mm -hmm. um, we do have like, I always like use this as an example, but one of our friends is, or used to be a Broadway conductor, um, but like wow. super musical, super yeah. artsy. That's and I think that just adds to the level of a fun to the yeah, class and, and the level of diversity yeah yeah so i think another thing on pre-med and pre-dental students mind is what do you do with your time outside of classes so i think there is a lot of pressure to involve yourself in like every single extracurricular and research opportunity yeah. there is out there but there's a limited amount of time in your life and you also yeah, have to sure. you know live your life and eat and sleep <laughs> and breathe so how did you manage that the first year i really didn't participate in much of anything because i just needed that time to like 
figure myself out and kind of just get my footing and then in the other three years i joined a couple of clubs on campus but i wasn't like super active in student activities i joined things that were truly relevant to what i was pursuing i always knew i wanted to go to dental school so i joined the pre-dental society i joined um the women in stem club i also did a couple of like volunteer opportunities and there were certain things that i did outside of school that were not affiliated with my undergrad so i did um a volunteering program Program where it would be in a hospital and we would go and we would do oral health education on mm -hmm. parents of pediatric patients that were there in the hospital like in just the waiting room and then the other thing was that I participated in research but it wasn't research like you'll think about it mm -hmm. because in dental school actually even though a lot of people do do research before they apply to dental school it's not a requirement mm -hmm. I think in med school they stress it more but for dental schools it's a nice plus but it is by no means something that they expect to see everybody do for me personally what I did was it was considered research because I was working at a dental pulp stem cell banking company so part of my job was researching through clinical trials and kind of compiling like a summary of research and putting that out for patient education and that was considered my research but I wasn't in a lab I wasn't the one that was like working with the stem cells mm. but it was still considered research because it was essentially just um, similar to like if you were to work in like a retrospective study where you just gather data and put it out for information purposes. I took a little bit of a different approach than Medina. So in my first year, I sort of like dip my toe into every club that I was potentially interested mm. in. And then in my second year, I was like, okay, which clubs do I really want to focus on? Which mm. ones do I really enjoy? And that's how I decided ultimately. And as for research, I started my research in, I think the second semester of my freshman year, I was in contact with a professor here in the biomedical engineering department. Mm. And I did research with him for the rest of my undergrad. And so there was like a summer funding research uh, program and then there was also the independent research course which I did my senior fall. And that was about using uh, CRISPR-Cas9 to edit mm. um, and hopefully treat acute myeloid leukemia and sickle cell wow. anemia. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> and yeah, so we we're focusing on like how do we actually get these into the cells to treat them. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I think it's really cool how there's so many different types of research though. It doesn't yeah, necessarily absolutely. have to be in a BME lab, like super like basic science or translational science focus. Yeah. It could be something clinical, yeah. it could be outreach, just anything that you think that you would be interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the questions that I got on my Instagram when I asked for your guys' interest and in, like what to talk about for this video was what was the biggest surprise as you transitioned from undergrad to medical school or dental school? I'd say that for me, it was kind of, it was the amount of freedom that you got with the time and like you have to choose what you do with your time because there it is a limited resource. Yeah. You do have to spend a lot of time studying and, and doing clinical work. And what do you want to do with the other time? Mm -hmm. um, I will say that the other surprise was that it kind of felt like more like high school, <laughs> kind of like reverting back to high school because it's like 140 med students, yeah. around 80 or 90 dental students. Yeah. And we take the same classes, yeah. um, like very similar schedule for yeah. the first one and a half years at least. You kind of like know everyone, know their faces, know their names, and yeah. it kind of feels like high school versus undergrad was so big. That's so true actually, yeah. We're a very small community. Even though there's a lot of us in terms of the, the entire school, each individual class here I think gets to know one another on a, like, a very personal level. I would say the biggest surprise for me was honestly how I had to throw all of my previous study techniques out the window and <laughs> completely rewire how I study because my entirety of my undergrad biochem course was covered in like one week of our <laughs> molecular mechanisms <laughs> course in like 10 lectures and so I had to really figure out how to now tackle this wealth and breadth of information mm -hmm. that I used to have much more time to memorize and learn so that was the biggest surprise and challenge for me like I expected it to be hard not that hard <laughs> that was a big adjustment okay so the next topic is going to be about deciding between medical school and dental school. And I think this is a, a difficult question because they are very similar fields, but yeah. you ultimately specialize in different things. I think it's very interesting because 
I don't know, maybe dental students or dentists have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because every time like we say like, oh, dentist is a doctor, they're like, dentists aren't doctors. I'm like, you guys, chill. We literally have doctor at the end of our degree. But I think that it's the level of care that you wanna provide because I think that dentists most of the time work in a private practice setting. Um, that's one of the things to think about. Like um, in medicine, a lot of people work in hospitals, but a lot of people also work in private practice. But also uh, what I talked about in our video that we filmed for my channel was that Dentistry, a lot of the times, especially in restorative dentistry, is a lot of times instant gratification. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I personally really love that. I think it's also really cool that there's so many sub-specializations of dentistry. Because yeah. we think of medicine, you apply to medical or dental school, and yeah. then you apply to residency. Yeah. And so there's so much diversity in that too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think actually a lot of people don't realize how many different dental specialties there are. Most people know like, okay, pediatrics, general, and then like braces, yeah. which is ortho. <laughs> And then like oral surgery and that's it. But there's like literally so many dental specialties, especially now. We have even like dental anesthesia. We have um, oral path. We have um, oral radiology. We have so many different specialties that not even are always clinical. Sometimes they're more academic, especially things like oral path, oral radiology. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what your cup of tea is, but you can definitely find it in either med or dental. But in dental, definitely there's fewer people, I would say, going into more of the academic routes. And there's more people doing clinical dentistry, but it also depends on the kind of clinical dentistry that you do. I think it could depend on your level ex of exposure to both fields. So if you are deciding between both, we would recommend that you probably should shadow in both dental oh, yeah. and medical clinics. 100%. And it also is, it's interesting because a lot of things like, a lot of fields like potentially like internal medicine is a very non-instant gratification. You're chronically managing diseases yeah. versus some other fields like, I don't know, like let's say ophthalmology with cataract surgery. Like you do the surgery and then you fix the, the yeah. issue. So now for the curriculum for med school and dental school, because it's really important to know what you're sort of getting yourself into. Yeah. Um, at least for Columbia, the first one and a half years is the preclinical curriculum. So we take, at the beginning, it's molecular mechanisms. We take anatomy. Genetics, genetics, immunology. Farm. Yeah, so a lot of that stuff in the first semester. And then in the second and third semesters, it's like body systems. So like organ <laughs> systems, your neuro, psych, we do GI, we do basically yeah. everything. Cardio, mm -hmm. renal. If you choose to go to a school like Columbia where it's a combined biomed curriculum, there's I think maybe three dental schools in the country that do this. And it may seem like overkill in the grand scheme of things, but I think it actually is incredibly helpful because there are oral manifestations to every single systemic disease. Taking those classes as a dental student, it was really valuable in understanding how every single thing is connected, especially things like diabetes and heart disease that are very, very closely linked. Like there's a lot of research backing this with um, oral health and especially periodontal disease. So fun fact. And that brings us into our, our next question about like the clinical situation in yeah. medical school and dental school. So after the one and a half years, we have one year of clinical experience. So for med school, this is you're doing your rotations in internal medicine, in surgery, in neuro, psych. So you cover all your bases or most of your bases. There are some specialties that are not covered yeah. um, throughout those 12 months. And what does that look like for dental school? Yeah, so after the one and a half years, we actually have one more semester where it's preclinical, but it's preclinical dental classes only. So we do the preclinical course of every single dental specialty, like endo, perio, peds, all of them. Uh, prost and we have a lab component along with each course where we actually apply the skills that we're learning in the lecture portions like for peds we drill on these like tiny little baby tychodons with like these little teeth for ortho we like glue brackets onto teeth and learn how to do that and wire bend um, and so that's the preclinical portion and that's where we take most of our exams that I guess are kind of similar to shelf exams and medical school rotations but we take all of them before we start our clinical year which starts in July of our third year so in between the second mm -hmm. and third year and then that year is our full clinical year of rotations with classes only two days a week so for the clinical year for med school rotations usually range from like four weeks to like eight weeks long so like one to two months each and then after that you get dedicated time to study for your step exam so step one and then step two and then i think for columbia it's a little different because yeah. Usually, people take step one right after preclinical, mm -hmm. um, but for here, we save that until after you finish your rotations, which now it's pass-fail, so 
you can use your clinical knowledge, which really solidifies during those 12 months um, to pass step one. And then you have dedicated time to step, study for step two. And then after that, there are these other electives that you can take in things that interest you. And you can also apply to outside institutions. So for example, if you're interested in potentially doing residency on the West Coast and you're in a New York school, then you can apply for a sub I or sub internship over there. And then if you go straight through and you don't take a research year, which is a whole nother topic that we can talk about, um, then you start applying, I think, in your fall of your senior year or your fourth year of medical school. So dentistry is a little bit different actually. So that's where I think that the major difference comes in because if you're doing, let's say like general dentistry, a lot of times people will just go straight out of school and just start working right away. In New York, and New York I think in Delaware are like the only states that require general dentists to do a year of residency. So you still have to work in like a hospital-based system or it could be a school-based like AGD. But the step one and two exams I think are similar to our board exams, which is we used to have NBDE part one and two. Now they've gotten rid of the two two parts and they've made it one exam and now it's called the INBDE. Now that they've changed it a little bit, we just have to take one integrated board exam, usually at the end of your third year or at the beginning of your fourth year um, before you apply to residency programs for the match. And then in terms of like externships, we do get about two weeks throughout the entirety of our third year and I think our fourth year as well where we can um, request to do externships but those are more things that you have to like arrange on your own if there's a particular office or hospital where you want to um, get some more experience in a field that you're interested in. And now like sort of jumping back in time to like four years prior to when you actually have to think about the step exams, mm -hmm. the MCAT and the DAT. So those are like the entrance exams that you need for med school and dental school. And so how does that differ? I think it's pretty similar in that yeah. it covers a lot of the same like science topics. Yeah. Do you guys also have like a reading comprehension section? So yeah, I would say the biggest difference, obviously the DAT is about half the time of the MCAT. The MCAT is what, like eight hours? The DAT is like four and a half, so that's not that crazy. We do cover all the sciences. So we have the survey of natural sciences, which is bio, chem, and orgo. Um, and that's the first section of the exam. Then we have something that the medical um, MCAT doesn't have. It's called the perceptual ability section, which is like these like shapes and it'll give you like a shape and you have to like unfold it and figure out what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a reading comprehension section and then there is a math section. So ours is mainly bio, chem, psychology or like psych -soch, and then the reading comprehension part or like the cars section. Mm -hmm. And I also do have a breakdown of these sections and how I got my score on a video on my channel. So we will link that yeah. down below and also potentially up here somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, if you have any questions about that, let us know because it can be a really, really challenging process. For sure. Because I'm still in the preclinical part of the curriculum, we do have like bedside sessions where we go in to see patients and then write notes and do a physical exam. Medina has a lot more clinical exposure in the dental yeah. clinics. And so how has it been applying your preclinical knowledge to actually seeing patients? I will say it's a lot more intimidating than just like working on a model and doing the things that you learn in class on a mannequin as opposed to an actual patient. Um, but I will say that me and most of my classmates have really stepped up and, and most people before doing any kind of procedure, we're all like studying, we're all reviewing our notes. Also, there's so much oversight when it comes to doing anything. So faculty are always there. They're always checking off on every single step of the procedure and they're always there if we need help or have questions, but also they do need to sign off on every single step before we can proceed. Very similar, I think, for clinical year, med students do see patients, but there is like resident yeah. oversight, there is attending oversight, yeah. and also the notes need to be co-signed. So. Oh yeah, for sure, we have the same thing. Awesome, so I think we covered a lot yeah, in this video, we did. and we also filmed another video on Medina's channel, so go check that out at Smiles Pending. And last question, and probably the most important <laughs> question, is what is your favorite tooth? Okay, so I actually have a really good answer to this. So <laughs> my favorite tooth is your maxillary first molar. And the reason why is because it's the first like big tooth in the back. Um, and the reason why I like it is because it has an extra cusp. It's a cute little cusp called the cusp of Carabelli. And it just has such a cute little cusp and it's like extra. It doesn't actually have any kind of function. It's just like cute and it's there. And it's also very important in chewing. So now that's, that's my favorite. <laughs> 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 All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you learned so much. If you have any other questions, let us know in the comments below or on our Instagrams, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>